Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to day three devotion here on Thursday. And we're going to be talking about uh, growing in prayer uh, as we started on Monday with Pastor TJ. And he was talking about complete submission. Um, Brother Jody followed up with grace and mine is growth. So we're talking about the prayers of Jabez. And so we'll get started and we'll end in a word of prayer. But um, kind of our central theme here, the, the verse of scripture that we've all um, been using is First uh, Chronicles 4 and 10. Um, and it says, and Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Um, and so we notice here in the very beginning uh, that Jabez is calling on the God of Israel, okay, uh, the big G. And um, obviously in this time, uh, there were other little gods. Uh, there were, uh, we read all through the Old Testament of um making sacrifice or idol worship and things. And of course, we're no different today in our world. We see all kinds of people um, serving uh, and living um, for other gods besides the one true God. So it's important that Jabez, uh, that we know here that he is calling on the God who is able to uh, answer those prayers. Okay, the living God. Uh, the true God, the omnipotent God, um, saying that thou would, uh, wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And that's kind of where we get the verse of scripture here um, for our theme of uh, enlarge my coast or enlarge my borders. Um, you know, as Brother Jody talked about, um, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, you know, truly that that is something that we want. Uh, we want God's blessings. Um, you know, we're able to see them each day and they're new each day. Um, but that's something that we desire. We desire to be blessed from God. Um, and we know that ultimately we will be blessed uh, when this life's over with, but God blesses us each day here as well when we look for him. Uh, but enlarge my coast, enlarge my borders, grow me, stretch me. Um, you know, when we first went to Nicaragua, I think in 2016, that was one of the things that they talked about, that, that that should be our prayer, that God would stretch our faith. And that's kind of what Jabez is talking about here. You know, enlarge my coast. He's not saying, you know, um, make me more powerful or anything like that. But he's saying, enlarge me, God. Be Let me be more used of you. Um, you know, that thy hand might be with me. Um, you know, Jabez is not... He's not operating here on his own strength. He's he's depending upon the Lord. He's asking the Lord to, um, you know, enlarge him um, that that God's hand would grow us, that we would God's hand would go with us. Um, you know, small Christians would say, I can't do this, you know, and in a sense, that's true. Small churches would say we can't do this and. That's true. But God using a, what we would say a small Christian or a small church, whatever that is, um, God is able to use. And that's what Jabez's prayer is. God use me. Don't let me put limits on myself. Don't let me live inside this little box or don't let me live in this little comfort zone of mine. Because um, that's something we're all uh, guilty of, I believe, especially in the world we live in today. Everyone wants to get in their comfort zone um, and serve and try to serve God or try to get in their comfort zone and try to serve themselves. But um, why if God's calling us out of our comfort zone? Uh, why if he wants to grow us out of that comfort zone? Um, and that's Jabez's prayer. And that's truth. Um, truly what we're, we're getting across tonight in this devotion of growing in our prayers, that we don't pray just for God to keep us nice and neat in a little box and protect us, but that God would, you know, get us out of our box uh, and put us wherever he wants us. Okay. Um, 
that, that we get in God's box, not try to live in our own little comfortable box. Um, why? That thou wouldest keep, us me from, keep me from evil. And a lot of times that's what we do. We get in our own little box here and think, you know, we get in this little comfort zone and uh, we think we're hiding from the devil. But a lot of times it's the devil that keeps us in that little box out of fear or whatever it might be, um, that it may not grieve me. Okay. Uh, that's another tool of the devil is grief. Um, he loves when we slip and fall and stumble um, and make a mess of things. Um, God is faithful and he's going to forgive us of the slip ups that we have, but the devil's going to try to use those as a tool. Okay. He'll bring those to our memory every chance that we get, give him an opportunity to do that. And that's what Jabez is saying that it, it grieved me not it says and God granted that which he requested. Okay. Uh, so God is faithful. God is faithful when we pray within his will, um, to, for his blessings, that he would enlarge us, you know, uh, that his hand would lead us and guide us. You know, he'd be a light to our path, you know, um, you know, light up our way for us. God's going to do that, that he would keep us from evil. You know, uh, he'll do that. If, if we follow in his steps, he will keep us from, um, from evil. So all of these are, um, Prayers that would be in the will of God for all of us uh, to pray that that he would help us to grow, that he would stretch us, okay, that we see his hand each day. Uh, then we'll go to Second Peter uh, 2 and 2. And if you back up to verse 1 in Second Peter, um, here Peter is talking again to his church that's kind of been um, deserted, not deserted, but kind of scattered um, under some persecution. And some of them's getting ready to become martyrs and everything else. But Peter's still telling them what they need to do. And he's telling them, you know, take off the old man in verse one. He talks about taking off the malice. In other words, the unforgiving spirits or the bitterness or, you know, don't walk around with that chip on your shoulder. Um, and he talks about taking off the gall as well, um, which is, you know, gall is kind of using the cleverness to try to impress people, you know, and we're taught in the world today, um, that you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And it's good that we impress people. But when we use a cleverness and we're always striving to impress other people, uh, especially in our social media world, um, you know, a lot of times that can become our main objective and we become fake people um, that we, you know, we're always trying to impress people to, to get the likes or the follows or whatever it might be. And again, um, the most important person that we can impress is God. God, you know, um, but he knows us. We're not going to, we're not going to fool God, but we should, um, strive to live the life that he's called us to be, to be all he's called us to be. Okay. Who he's created to be. And he knows when we're doing it for with a sincere heart. And he knows when we're doing it, uh, to try to impress people. And so that's what. Peter's saying to get rid of the gall. Don't do it to try to impress people. Uh, do it because uh, that's what God's called us to do. Hypocrisies. Get rid of those as well. Take off that coat of hypocrisy. Uh, in other words, that's just attempting to be who you're not. Okay. And envies. Uh, the feeling of being discontent. Okay. I wish I was or I wish I could or whatever. Um, you know. Uh, God's created us with certain gifts and talents and, you know, uh, for a reason. And we should use those gifts and talents uh, that he's given us. OK. Um, and not be envious of people who might have a different gift or a different talent or a bigger home or anything else than, than what we might have. Um, and then he follows it up here with evil speaking, you know, slander. Um, only the I think a good motto that we could use here in the world today is if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Um, you know, all we hear on the news and, uh, the social media is just people berating each other, just, you know, uh, slander everywhere, throwing people under the bus and, you know, um, belittling people with our words. Um, and then Peter saying, you know, we don't need to do that. You know, don't slander, don't speak evil of people. 
you know, we should build people up and, and, you know, um, say good things, you know, speak words of blessings. All right. Um, but then we get to the verse here as newborn babes desiring sincere milk. In other words, perfect milk or spiritual milk, the word of God. And you may remember uh, two or three weeks ago when we did this devotion, this was one of the um, scriptures that I shared. And I talked about my calves, um, you know, and and each each day I'm trying to wean them off a little bit. Uh, but each day they, they know when I'm outside and they, they're going to come and find me no matter how far they have to walk or how far um, I might be from where they're at. If they see me or hear me outside, they're going to come and uh, find me and they're going to sit there and bawl because um, they, they want to be fed. And, and they know that, you know, I'm that source of milk for them right now. And, and God's saying that's what we need to be, you know. Uh, that we're going to go into his presence, okay? Uh, and we're going to desire that milk, uh, that sincere milk, okay? Each and every day, that pure milk. Um, why? So that we can grow, okay? Why? We grow in that milk. And it says thereby. And then we go to 2 Peter 3 and 18. And the last verse that we're going to talk about. How are we going to grow? Grow in grace, you know? And I've said it before. Um, there's a lot in the Bible that I, I don't understand. Um, you know, I'm, I'm learning and I'm growing all the time in it. Um, and trying to study and, 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 and be all that God's called me to be. But there's one thing that I, I said, I felt I understood and that's grace. I know who I once was. I know who I'm not now. And I know why, because of God's grace that he shed on me. Um, and, and I want to continue to grow in his grace. And that doesn't mean we sin more so that he'll give us more grace, but that we understand more the value of the cross and what, what price that he paid for us, okay, uh, in our life, and that we can grow in that grace of who he is, all right? Also to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all right? The knowledge um, of who he is, of who he has revealed himself uh, in his word to be. OK, that that's that's the secret. If it was well, not a secret, it's in God's word. But that that's it right there. Uh, people just talk like I would like to grow. I want to be a better Christian. I want to grow in the Lord. OK, um, do we need to read his word? You know, he reveals himself to us. And, and you've heard several preachers say that, you know, they've read a scripture over and over again. Uh, and, you know, and then just the Lord will reveal himself through it. And then that's the way it is um, that we study and we ask God to reveal that his spirit would, would show us um, and that, that we can grow in the knowledge. We can grow in the grace. And then I like the wording that Peter uses here to close out uh, this verse of scripture here of our Lord and our savior. And I talked before about how he said he is precious to him, but here, the, you know, the knowledge of our Lord, um, the Lord is, is a name that we use so often for, for Christ. Um, but, but the Lord is, you know, that shows ownership, that shows to be our ruler. Uh, and so that's a decision we have to make, that we allow him to be our Lord. Um, that's not a name that he just has like Jesus uh, that was given to him at his birth. Um, but Lord is when we submit ourselves to him and we ask him to be the ruler when we submit ourselves before him then he becomes our lord and he becomes our savior our master okay and he finishes up to him be glory both now and forever amen and truly um we want him each and every day to be our lord and to be our savior uh, and and to him be the glory you know uh, that he allows us to grow, that we have him to pray to. Um, you know, we're talking about growing in prayer. Um, and then that's that's the key to it, that, that we give him the glory each and every day, not just when things are going the way we want them to or the way we think that they should be going, um, but each and every day, God, we give you the glory for who you are. And so we're going to conclude right there. 
Uh, I hope you got something out of this. Um, you know, the the secret to growing in prayer is to do it. Um, just talk to Jesus. Talk to him as you would uh, anyone else. And he hears us when we pray to him. And, and we will grow in, in prayer. Okay. Uh, and when we study his word, we will grow in the grace and we will grow in the knowledge as well. All right. And so let's dismiss in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we do thank you for this day. God, we pray your blessings upon each and every one uh, of our church family or our friends that might have gathered in to, to watch this. God, we just pray your blessings upon them this day. God, we pray that you would help us all to grow, grow in our prayer life. God, help us to grow in, in the knowledge of your word. Father God, Lord, may we desire it. Um, that, that spiritual milk, that sincere milk as a newborn babe. Lord, that never before in times like these, God, Lord, we, we need all of you that we can get. Father, help us to be obedient, to, to spend the time in your word, spend the time on our needs. Because, Lord, we we got a world that, that needs you. And, God, you're, you're sparing us. You're giving us grace each day. Father God, that your word can continue to go out. And, Lord, help us to be those agents to, to share your word. We thank you and we praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. I pray that you have a good day. We love you all. And we look forward to seeing you Sunday.